Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at ways that we can come together to work together and help each other in the ministry. Today, we have with us Alan Pointer for um, over uh, two decades. He has been the director of Truth and Peace, the student leadership conference for the Free Will Baptist denomination. He's a graduate of Welch College, and he also has a master's degree in youth and family ministry from Luther Seminary. Uh, he worked for many years as a youth pastor at First Real Baptist Church in Russellville, Arkansas, and now he is the lead pastor of Kofors Chapel Real Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. He's been married for over 30 years yeah. to uh, Miss Jill, and they have two daughters, uh, and they have been just doing a good job in ministry for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have you here with us today, Alan. Well, thanks for letting me be here. Appreciate I sh- it. should also note that he is the co-author of Truth and Peace Leader, A Student's Guide to Leadership. So this is something we encourage all of our students. And really, I think it'd be a good book for youth leaders as well to take a look at. Yeah, I um, think so. To, to examine that. So thank you for being with us, Alan. But wow, Truth and Peace. Uh, yeah. Both of my kids were part of Truth and Peace, it, and I go to the college, uh, Welch College, from time to time, and uh, I see all these people that were in Truth and Peace, and I believe it really uh, changed many of them, the trajectory of their lives. Tell us a bit, what is this Truth and Peace Leadership Conference all about? Well, it's been going since 1984, and the truth is that it was the... Um, in the imagination of Jim Lothern. Mm -hmm. And Jim Lothern was given the new task of uh, taking over the youth department at Randall House. And as a result, he had been thinking about the Hillmont Engineers, a program that had been going on at Hillmont Hillmont Camp right outside Nashville uh, for a long time. And several of our denominational leaders had come through the Hillmont Engineers. And he thought, what if we did that with our young people on... um, a basis, you know, across, not just in Tennessee, but uh, across the denomination. And so in 1984, it started, and mm-hmm. it's been going on since then. I think it's uh, one of the most unique programs uh, that anyone does, mm-hmm. and I have the great fortune of being the uh, the director of that conference. Now for, I guess this will be my 24th conference coming up. Wow. It's a long time. So uh, a lot of our folks have heard about Truth and Peace, and I think it's something we, we want to encourage. You've got a student leader uh, in your church, something to encourage them to apply for. Uh, tell us what happens when someone goes to Truth and Peace. Well, it's a tract program, uh, which means that Uh, we have a different track for first year all the way through fourth year. So if a student comes in as a ninth grader, uh, they will be sharing some of the experience of Truth and Peace with the rest of the conference, but at the same time, they'll have some individual tracks that Mm -hmm. will work through them. So one of the ways that we try to teach leadership in in our model is leadership is discipleship, and that means we are being a servant. Mm -hmm. And so we teach servant leadership. And so let's say a a student comes, they're going to meet with an adult one time, and go through uh, a spiritual inventory. So they'll meet with an adult. Then at the same time, they're, every day they'll meet with their peer group. So like the ninth grade boys will meet and the ninth grade girls, and we'll be working through a new book this year that I'm, uh, I think that we're going to put in that's uh, pretty exciting about culture and worldview. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then they meet on their team. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a first year will have all of these touches that will be going on from... Um, uh, their peer group from uh, uh, spiritual touches of, hey, how are things going, encouragement, things like that. Um, second year, we build on that. Mm-hmm. Third year, they actually lead a team. And then in the fourth year, they actually become the staff of the conference. And so uh, every student is able to have some type of spiritual conversation individually with their own peer group, with a team, and then with the entire conference. And we think that that is one of the things that makes Truth and Peace very unique. Mm-hmm. And then we end up at the National Youth Conference, which is called Vertical 3. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, after all these years, uh, people still think, well, what's Vertical 3? That's the National Youth Conference. And they, they're the grunt leadership of the, you know, they serve behind the scenes uh, and make the conference run. Yes. I uh, noticed one year they had a T-shirt that said, uh, 
Op- truth and peace, opening doors since yeah, holding doors <laughs> since eighty four. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty good. So they are you. If you've ever been to the National Association of Free Will Baptist Convention, you'll see the truth and peace students working. The in red the backpacks seminars. will be everywhere. They are. maybe even in your way. In, in we, your we apologize for that. So, but but they're good. They're good yeah. kids. They're helping out. And just before we go on, if you want to learn more, you could go to vertical three dot com. Yep. So Alan just mentioned that, and there's a section there where you could click on truth and peace and usually the deadline is october 31st is it yeah we've moved the deadline up to october 15th okay and then 31st allows us to get all the forms in and the references from their youth pastors um, pastors things like that and so yeah everything's wrapped up by october 31st then usually we announce the uh the new participants uh usually by the first week of december wonderful and so uh, some highly skilled, uh, really caring staff that work with your with the young people across the way. Not not the place though. If you've got a kid that's uh, a juvenile delinquent junior and uh, you're wanting to get him straight, this is really for leaders. Kids it is leaders. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in youth ministry and having been in youth ministry for so long, you you don't worry about the students that you take to camp that much. Mm-hmm. This is a leadership track. This is leadership training. And so what we're looking for are those students that either are already showing it or you feel really have potential mm-hmm. to be able to lead, and we're going to build into them. And then something happens. I honestly... Uh, the staff, you mentioned the staff. One of the reasons that Truth and Peace is so successful is we have an incredible staff mm-hmm. of caring adults that are in ministry. Uh, some of them are um, pastor, youth pastors, uh, worship pastors. We've got some laymen. We've got people who just care about teenagers, mm-hmm. and they care about the conference, and they're just the best. Yes. And so when I say that they're having spiritual conversations, they're talking to some of the very best people that Free Will Baptists have. Uh, some of them are Truth and Peace alum, yes. uh, and they're able to share with them what God is doing in their heart and, and then try to build it into, into those students' lives. Right, and just so people have an idea, like there's a fellow with a Ph.D. in psychology, there's a fellow with a doctorate degree in physical therapy, yeah. uh, there's uh, ladies that are highly qualified, professionals. Teachers. Yeah. Teachers, and so... Nurse. We, we have a nurse on staff. got a nurse on staff, and so part of what happens is sometimes we can get in our mind, well, only missionaries or pastors are you know, really doing full-time ministry, but uh, these Truth and Peace staff folks are, uh, whether it be in a physical therapy clinic, I'm thinking about Cameron Lane, yeah, Cameron. you know, or uh, Neil Gilland, you know, so these are people that uh, they're not pastors per se, but I can learn a whole lot from them, and it helps perhaps a person realize how they could really use their skills, use their spiritual gifts in, in a lot of different areas. And a student might come and, and wonder, what is it that I can do? And then they see the other students doing it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think specifically in my own youth group at home, I had a student that was pretty good musically. Mm-hmm. But then when he came, he saw what was going on musically, and he said, I can do that, and I can do that back in my youth group. And now we actually track for that. Donald Myers is our worship leader, and uh, we have a – if you're interested in – worship ministry Mm -hmm. or interested in playing an instrument or singing or something along those lines, he will take them and rehearse with them and teach them things, and then they'll actually lead during the conference. Mm -hmm. And the idea is then they can go back home and do the very same thing. So uh, we're pretty committed to to what we do and why we do it. And I I think that uh, there's an off a lot of youth groups that have benefited from it. That's excellent. So you had a, you've had a lot of experience with Truth and Peace. You had a lot of experience as a youth minister. Let's talk a bit. You kind of got into that there uh, with the Truth and Peace, like you're trying to help kids understand how they can use their skills, for example, musical skills right. or whatever, back at home in their local church. Uh, let's talk a bit about how uh, different kinds of uh, churches, people in different kinds of churches are probably listening, some that have a hired youth pastor or volunteer, and some don't have anything at all like that. Uh, what kind of advice might you give them as they're trying to work effectively uh, with the kids in their church? I think that we over estimate the value of having someone who uh, is paid to do it. Mm-hmm. And I was paid to do it right uh, part time and then I was you know full time at the church. And yet my entire goal was to try to get a, a, uh, an adult who had 
a passion for discipling kids or t- for being around teenagers to take that lead. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is that anyone can care about right. a teenager and it make a big difference. I came from a youth group of like six or seven, mm-hmm. and I was related to half of them. Yeah. And I can't tell you that we ever had a paid youth worker, right. but I can tell you about men like Bill McPhail, who taught my Sunday school class, or Jack Putman, who took us out for pizza mm-hmm. and who poured into our lives. And so I think we think so much about programming that we forget about that it's really relationship yes. and caring. And so we try to build that into truth and peace that we're talking about the relationship side of it, because mm-hmm. that's what's important. So it, it doesn't matter the size of your youth group. Uh, if you've got a, a teenager who's needing that next step, mm-hmm. then we encourage uh, them to to look into truth and peace and see what happens. And so, you're really talking about Titus too, older Actually, people teaching the younger. And you were at First Church Russellville. You had the Lanes, Cameron and Krista, yeah. and it sounds like you were they were doing that. They were discipling kids in in that church where you guys were at before. Yeah, and, I had a, a incredible volunteer youth mm-hmm. staff at at. Uh, at what's now Connect Church, yes. you know, First Church Russellville. Um, they changed the name after I left, uh, <laughs> so it's hard for me to yeah, it's hard saying to, that. Yeah. But yeah, Cameron and Krista were there. Uh, we had um, several others uh, that were there through the years that were just very faithful. Melinda, Sam, oh, those, yeah, you know, yeah. several others that were there. And they kind of helped model how I wanted the staff to work right. for Truth and Peace. And so I started recruiting who I, who I just saw were some of the best out there um, to try to help with that. So, you know, a lot of churches, and you, know, you don't have to be a mega church. You no. can, in fact, you can be a small church, and that can sometimes work better. You've just got to put the time in, is what you're saying. You know, have relationships, spend time, whatever that would be. And uh, wow, uh, what can that happen? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a professional youth pastor. Yeah. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not so uh, unconvinced that it wasn't better to just have an adult working with my Bible memorization when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I, I think we're trying to have the next great youth talk, which is important, yes. and we're trying to have youth experiences, which Truth and Peace is a youth experience, and I yeah. think that that has a lot to do with it, that we work very hard on the experience that goes through. But, you know, if you can say at the end of the day that a teenager knows Scripture, mm-hmm. I think you've probably succeeded. Mm-hmm. And if they know that you care about them, then... Uh, the uh, the statistics uh, say that it takes one caring adult outside of the parents that really helps to formulate the faith and make it stick. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times it's a coach, but a lot of times it's just someone at the church who just pays attention to a teenager. Yeah. So I really think that's the model to go with. So you mentioned Bible memo or Bible memorization. So uh, we've got the church training service. You can learn about that at the Vertical 3 website. And there's a list of verses that, depending upon whether a kid be in first grade or uh, all the way up to 12th grade or whatever, that they can memorize. And uh, what you're saying is there's there's people that work with those kids, help them memorize. Absolutely. And, uh, if you look at some of that information there, you just go to vertical3.com and click on CTS, Church Training Service, and you get all kinds of information. I know a lot of those Truth and Peace kids are working in that, but... Wow, uh, just regular people, and that's what we had at our church. Uh, uh, people coming from work, working on like a weeknight with a kid, working through some memorization. Sometimes they win and go all the way to the National Association, and sometimes they don't, but they know a lot of Scripture. And they do. Uh, you know, I I was in Bible Tic-Tac-Toe, mm-hmm. and I can tell you who my leaders were. Mm-hmm. Chuck and LaJean were my leaders, and I ended up being the youth pastor to their kids, which is interesting, but those verses I learned in Bible Tic-Tac-Toe, I still know. Mm. And I got to Bible, and we weren't very good, by the way. We got killed by Florida. Um, oh, no. There we, were four girls, and they were pretty. And yeah, they kinda, it distracted you, know, you guys. Yeah, a little bit, you know, and, and plus we just weren't that good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's a whole nother, other, another story. But the verses that I remember, um, they never leave. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a part of the, of the discipleship process. So we want to encourage our folks to take advantage of that. Those resources are provided by Randall House, which you could also go to their website, D6 Family or RandallHouse.com. Which Truth and Peace is is part part of of. Randall House, yeah. And uh, it's just good stuff for people to take advantage of. Well, thank you, Alan, for 
stopping by and being with us today Thanks. and talking to us about truth and peace and uh, and the things that any church can take advantage of. And we hope our churches out there will do that. Thank you.